So let's say that some function f has a two-sided inverse function g. And let's suppose that for two different inputs, x and y, we have f of x equals f of y. One of the requirements for g to be a two-sided inverse is that if we take g of f of x, then this whole thing is just the same thing as x. So we can use g to kind of cancel out f. Now what that means is that if we start with this equation up here, and we take g on both sides, then the g and f cancels out, and we're left with x equals y. So we've shown that f of x equals f of y implies x equals y, which means that f is injective. Because f is injective, the equation f of x equals c for some fixed value c in the codomain has at most one solution for x. Because if we had two different solutions, x and x prime, then that would imply that f of x equals f of x prime. And because f is injective, that means that x equals x prime. Now let's suppose that we start with our function f, and we want to construct a right inverse, which we'll call f to the negative 1. Now the definition of a right inverse is that any time we take some value in the codomain of f, the output f inverse of y has to satisfy the equation f of f inverse of y equals y. Now if we look at this equation, it has the same form as the equation we looked at up here. f of something equals some fixed output. So if our goal is to construct a right inverse, we can do that by picking values of f inverse of y for each individual point y in the codomain. But for each individual point, this equation f of f inverse of y equals y has at most one solution for this value in here, f inverse of y. In other words, there is only one choice that we can pick for the value of f inverse of y to make the function satisfy the requirement for a right inverse. And if there's only one choice at each input point, then altogether there can be at most one choice for a right inverse function. And that means that the function f has at most one right inverse. But one of the requirements for g to be a two-sided inverse is that it has to be a right inverse. So because there is at most one right inverse, there's also at most one two-sided inverse, which means our two-sided inverse is unique.